Hello and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. We're going to be talking about gases and gas mixtures today particularly. And so let's go ahead and talk about them. All right. This video is particularly appropriate for intro chem, gen chem one, maybe even biology. Who knows? Woohoo! Okay, so in terms of looking at the gas mixtures, what you're looking at here is you're looking at kind of a combination of things. The first thing is really kind of looking at, ideally in lab, what you can actually measure. All right, so let's draw something here. Let's say I had a container. This is like a beaker that had N2, O2, and one of my favorites, N2O. I like N2O quite a lot. Why do I like N2O so much? This is like laughing gas. So good, <laughs> dinitrogen monoxide. All right, so in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this container. And if you look at the container for a moment, it has this mixture of gases. You know from earlier videos that gases mix completely. So there's no way to say one portion of the container is contained by the oxygen and so on and so forth. Also, if you heat the container, let's say I had a flame right here. We know that heat disperses evenly throughout the container. So because of that, we can already say that the volume of the container and the temperature in the container is constant, right? And that's pretty awesome right there. So when we look at what we're varying here, what can we measure? The thing about the gases mixing completely is that when we put a pressure gauge in here, which is how we measure pressure, looks kind of like a digital thermometer. There's my pressure gauge. The only thing we can measure off of the pressure gauge is the total pressure, right? So the pressure of the total mixture is the only thing that can reasonably be measured. And what's happening here is that there is a desire sometimes to know what portion of this pressure is actually um, exerted upon by N2 or O2 or N2O. So it's a problem that the only thing we can measure is the total pressure. So what we do is we could know what the total number of moles is as well. And we can know what the individual number of moles is for each of these gases, because we know how much of each gas we put into the container. And we know that if we added all of these together, then you would get the total number of moles. The interesting thing here is Dalton, in his Law of Partial Pressures, also said that you could find the total pressure by doing the exact same thing. You could add the individual pressures, if you knew them, together to get the total pressure of the entire uh, mixture of gases. The thing here that's interesting is not necessarily using these equations. I mean, they're interesting. They're good to know. If you um, specify one of them in the ideal gas law, so for instance, if you specified um, the moles of N2 in the ideal gas law, and you had the volume and the temperature, then you would be able to measure the partial pressure of N2 as well. If you specify something in the ideal gas law, it's going to be specified for the thing you're measuring as well. But the more interesting piece here is not using the ideal gas law. The more interesting piece is doing a comparison between the individual gas in the mixture versus the total mixture overall. So what does that look like? Well, for that, because we're going to have two sets of information here, we're going to actually be using the combined gas equation. I should use a wet cloth first. And this becomes incredibly useful at times when you're wanting to measure the pressure of one gas versus another. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to, we know that the 
combined gas equation, right? I got a squeaky pin. Is P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. What if instead of specifying ones and twos, I specified ones as the total, whatever I'm measuring of the total, and twos as the specific set of variables for one of these gases? Let's do N2O. Right? If we did that, then our lovely equation would change. It would change to, and I'll do a little bit of wet here, just to make sure I'm erasing this nicely. I think I mentioned this before, but nothing a professor or a teacher loves better than a nice clean board with some good markers. At least that's true for me. <laughs> Might never be true for everyone, but wow. It's a good time. All right, so in terms of this, if I've specified these two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the P total, the V total over the N total, and the T total equals the P of specifically N2O, VN2O over NN2O, TN2O. Gosh, I love laughing gas. You'd have to love la laughing gas to write it that many times. <laughs> so what do we just say? We just said V and T are constant for the mixture and for the individual gases. So if they're constant, that means they're the same number on both sides. There's not actually a difference between these. And so you can cancel those out, which leaves us with a variation of this. This variation is going to become important in what we're doing because we want to be able to get at this a little better, right? This variation on the theme of the combined gas equation. And I'm kind of erasing quickly today. I don't want to spend all my time erasing. OK. And this actually has a lot to do. This is particularly interesting, by the way, for the partial pressures. If you have like a toxic gas versus a non-toxic gas, or you're measuring different things, this is actually applicable to biology in terms of CO2 and O2 measurement. And I have a lot of biologists and nurses always coming to me and saying, why don't you teach this more? I am. Here we go. All right, so PT over NT equals P of N2O over N of N2O. What if I want to solve for P of N2O? If I want to solve for that, here we go. I'm going to multiply both sides by N of N2O to get rid of it. P of N2O becomes N of N2O over N of T times PT. And notice I rearranged this just a little bit. When I multiplied both sides, I actually basically switched places between the N of N2O and put the PT a little bit out. I did that for a reason, obviously. The reason why I did that is because this particular fraction is called a mole fraction, and it's specified often with the Greek, uh, capital Greek letter chi. So when they say the chi of N2O in your book, what they mean is N of N2O, the moles of N2O over the moles of the total gas mixture. Okay? You could write it either way. You could write it like this. Well, you could write it like this. You could write it like this, or you could write it as you will often see it in your book, where it is P of N2O equals chi of N2O PT. Okay? Any of those work, and all of them are fabulous. Okay? So in terms of looking at this a little bit further, when we look at these kinds of mixtures, we're often going to be doing multiple things, right? So if we're given kind of the idea, basic idea here is if you are given a mole of the individual gas, the number of moles of the individual gas and the total number of moles or an ability to find the total number of moles of the mixture and you're given a total pressure, then you're going to have to use either this equation or this equation. If you are given a V, a T, and a specific number of moles, let's say of N2O, 
then instead you can use the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. And if you've specified N2O here, this is what I was saying early, earlier, you will find the partial pressure specifically of N2O as well. Okay, so if you solved for it here, you would get N of N2O times RT. Remember, R is the ideal gas constant. In this case, it's 0 0.0821, or um, you could do 0 0.08206 liters ATM per mole K, right? So in this case, if we're given these kinds of values, we can specify the specific number of moles in the ideal gas law. We'll get the specific number of uh, ATM or the pressure that that particular gas exerts on the container. If you have a uh, little more information in terms of the mixture, you can use either this equation or this equation, which are actually the same thing. All right, until next time, I'll see you again. Adieu.